Hi everybody. So Ryzen Mobile got its debut in HP's NV X360 convertible. I've used it now for over two weeks and I'd like to share my good and bad experience, experiences with it. So let's start with the good things. First of all, AMD HP did a lot of things right with this one, like by using dual channel DDR4 2400 memory. And also they, or especially HP, let the SOC run at 25 watts. That leaves some headroom for the SOC under load. Especially important in gaming when you have a lot of load on the CPU and the GPU. All in all a nice change to the 99% AMD equipped crap laptops that have been released in the past. Which only had like single channel RAM. They often featured a useless crossfire config where you pair the APUs like 512 shaders with, a, with the 300 something shaders of a DGPU and uh, the experience were never good. Or they had just crappy screens and so on. So that's cool. So to the CPU. If you ever had a laptop with an AMD CPU in the past, you will know that they are very weak and you are probably used to slower loading times, hiccups, etc. Especially compared to um, Intel laptops that feature Intel CPUs with high IPC cores. So I'm not talking about Atoms or whatever there is, Pentium Ns. Well now, maybe first time since AMD's Turian days, there's a laptop with an AMD CPU that really feels well again, especially when you do some things, many things at once, like watch YouTube video, Netflix or whatever, have a lot of open tabs in your browser. It's really like night and day compared to those older generation excavator laptops. The Vega 8 named GPU is also pretty capable with its 512 shader units and 1.1 GHz frequency. Under load, the GPU always gets the priority over the CPU in using up the TDB budget, so the 25 watts we talked about. So in games, the GPU can clock high, while at some point the CPU will throttle. This behavior is common, and compared to Ryzen Mobile's predecessor, Excavator, it's never an issue because Ryzen's IPC is that high compared to Excavator. Yeah, so let's talk also about gaming. All in all, I guess the Ryzen 5 2500U is the fastest APU AMD has ever released, at least in the 25 watts config. So gaming is pretty good. It's superior to, let's say, AMD's A12. 9800 desktop APU, especially in CPU heavy multiplayer games like Battlefield 1. And uh, yeah, there Ryzen Mobile completely destroys all APUs that have been released so far until now. Yeah. So let's also talk about the bad stuff. And there's some really bad stuff. There's something that just blows my mind, and that's the drivers. The latest compatible driver drivers out there are two months old, which is a lot. Which means that many games like Wolfenstein 2 run without optimizations or don't run at all. Which really makes me wonder what AMD was thinking. It just it doesn't make any sense to bigly <laughs> advertise a Ryzen Vega combo and then cripple the GPU's capabilities by only offering all drivers. And I have to say, it's a bit sad. I mean, early adopters, they always get screwed up a little bit. But it seems like with AMD, early adopters get really, really, really screwed. Uh, especially the whole Vega story. And also Polaris wasn't that great in the beginning. And then after some months, you got the performance you've expected. And yeah, I hope that will change. AMD had a tough year, <laughs> a lot of things to do. So I guess they are at their limit. Yeah, another very annoying thing 
that also affects the GPU's capability, capabilities is the fixed amount of dedicated VRAM. 20, it's 256 megabytes and you cannot change that in the BIOS right now. And depending on the game, this results in the game either crashing, not starting or running at subpar performance. Sure, a game can access the additional four gigs of shared memory, but how that happens is different from game to game. And some game will just detect when you start that there's only 256 megabyte and probably will not start at all and or enter automatically in a low spec mode and so on. That's yeah, pretty unfortunate. And my hope is that HP will release a BIOS update soon and that let you increase the amount of dedicated memory in the BIOS. Yeah, so I told you already that there are a lot of games, including, well, I didn't tell you, but there are problems with a lot of games. And that includes also a lot of AAA titles. And this, I guess they suffer from those premature drivers and maybe also some under those VRAM, the small amount of VRAM. And those games either crash or are unplayable. And those games include Overwatch, Forza 7, Halo Wars, Gears of Wars, FIFA 18, Doom, and many more, and especially DirectX 12 games. Yeah. So, I mean, I have to say that all those yearly drivers updates are great, like the recent Adrenaline drivers that are nice, but it seems pretty dumb to me to make these huge software updates with on-screen display options and so on, but not to take enough care of their recent, probably most important product in years, which is Ryzen Mobile. And yeah, so AMD, please give us updated drivers. But all in all, I have to say this Ryzen Mobile is a clear winner if they fix the drivers and if they give some flexibility in the BIOS. Yeah, so thanks.